And I'm sorry, I'm a half a block from my house. Oh, is that okay? So yeah, That's so Jen. Yeah, I think that might have been Liz, but I'm not sure because she was in her car when I when I when her screen was on. So all right. Um <clears throat> So, Ronnie, do you okay. have the uh, opening start? Remark? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Just tell me when to start. Okay. You're ready to start. You're recording now. Okay. It's 6.33 p.m. Uh, September 20th, uh, 2023. Welcome, everyone. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. If you make a public comment, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The HRC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So with that, um, welcome everyone. Let me start with roll call. Um, so Liz Haywood. Hey, good. Present. Hey, good. Sorry. Oh, my God. That's all right. Everybody does that. Oh, man. Joy Eiffel. Is that correct? Eiffel? Eiffel. That's correct. Present. Laverne Kelly. Present. Rizwana Khan. Present. Deborah Colodney. Present. Tyler Macho, not here. Ronnie Parker, yes, I'm here. Jacinta Smith, absent. Okay, um, so the first order of business, I guess, is to ask if there are any, if there is any public, any, if there are any members of the public and if anyone wishes to comment. Um, I do not see any members of the public present today, so. So we just move on. Um, so the first um, agenda item is the introduction of new members. As I mentioned before we were recording, I'm so thrilled, just so very thrilled to see the screen full of people. We're almost full. We have only one vacancy. Um, so I'm really pleased. And what I would like to do is just go around and have people introduce themselves. So let's start with Laverne and then just call on the next person. Okay, I apologize for my voice. Um, my name is Laverne Kelly. Um, I've been on the board since, I think it was December of last year. Yeah, I think it was December of last year. And um, welcome new members. Deborah, I'll just go by the order that's on the screen, How's that? on my screen, Deborah. Sounds good. Hi, I'm Deborah Kalodny. I'm rather new to Amherst, moved here two years ago. I just joined the commission a couple of months ago. I live in North Amherst and my pronouns are they, them. Asa? Hi, I'm Asa Stanley Kembler. I'm the AmeriCorps member working with DEI and Crest in the Amherst offices. I'm happy to be here. Pamela? Hi, I'm Pamela Nolan Young. I'm the director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Joy? Hi, I'm Joy Eiffel. Um, I've been a resident of Amherst since 2019 and um, have had children in the Amherst High School currently and in the past. I'm glad to be here. Okay. Ms. Wana? Hi, I'm Ms. Wana Khan, and I'm an educator. I currently work in the school district and I am uh, all for the youth and the diversity, especially the juvenile, the agenda, the, you know, topic that is on the agenda. And I've been living here 
uh, for, since last year. And also I am she and her. Thank you. Jen, we're introducing ourselves. Oh, hi everyone. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Moist and I'm the Assistant Director to the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. And I'm just waiting for my computer to finish Zoom updating, so. <laughs> okay, and I'm Ronnie Parker. Um, I also joined the Human Rights Commission just a few months ago. Um, and um, anyway, human rights are very important to me, uh, which is why I'm here. Um, so are there any other comments before we move to the next item? Yes, I did not get introduced. Who? Liz really? is on. Oh my God. <laughs> it's because you popped, I was going along the line of my uh, screen and then you must have popped in in the middle somewhere. That's right? all right. My name is Liz Haygood. I'm a resident of Amherst since 1980 officially. Um, I raised two children in the Amherst schools. I currently have six grandchildren uh, that, well, they don't all go to school because they're very small, but I have two in the high school and one at Fort River. I've been on the commission. This is the beginning of my fourth year. I act as co-chair with Ronnie. And I don't know, there's a lot of things I could tell you about myself, but I'll just leave it at that. Oh, I retired from Amherst schools in 2021. However, I am there temporarily for the next two weeks, trying to help out in the middle school with all the turmoil that's going on. So Liz is really the one who's been here the longest and knows the most anyway. Um, um, most of us are new, I think, to this, so our biggest resource. Um, so the next agenda item is the Citizens for Juvenile Justice. You'll remember they came and made a presentation to us um, last month. And then for the new members, um, you would have seen their material in, your, in the package today. So uh, given our discussion, I would like to simply, um, um, I'd like to propose that we express our formal support for them by endorsing um, their group and their initiative. Um, do you, before we do that, do the new members have questions? Do you know what we're talking about, Jennifer? So I was not anticipating on coming into the meeting late. So I had to leave from an emergency yesterday. So I did not get to send out the packet. So if you do want to explain what the youth what we're endorsing, that would be great. If not, then I can explain it. Okay. Um, so as I can give a quick explanation and then I'll ask everyone else who was here last week to add what they got from it and I'll start us off uh, just so we know what it is that we're endorsing. So what we heard was that there are 18 to 20 year olds who are in the juvenile justice system who get naturally moved into the adult um, system uh, just by way of having turned 18. And that a lot of these, I think we know from our own children are just kids really. And uh, so the effort that we're supporting as I understand it was to keep them in the juvenile justice system and prevent them from getting into the adult system. And we heard a lot about how once you get into the adult system, it follows you through life. And we don't that want that to happen to young, very young kids. So um, they have asked for us to endorse their campaign. And that's what we're talking about and voting on today. Jen, do you want to have your hand up? Do you want to say more? Others who were there last week, if you want to add more, please do so. Jennifer, did you want to speak because your hand is still up or is that because you didn't take it back down? That's because I didn't take it back down. <laughs> okay. Um, I propose, um, I don't know if this, the question for me right now is considering that we have uh, at least three new members, um, four, three new members that have did not hear the presentation. There is the um, campaign letter that they're asking us to endorse that was sent to 
um, I think from Jennifer to me and you, Ronnie. And I'm thinking- I it, thought it, it went to everyone last month. Oh, did the it new go members to new members as well? It, but last month it was in the packet. Right, but the new members have not seen it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not fair. I don't know if that's a good word to say for them to, for us to ask them to endorse something they haven't actually read or seen. Um, so I'm wondering if it would be beneficial to hold off on that, and so they get a chance to take a look at that and vote on it at the next meeting, and if not. Um, at least at our retreat. I'm open to other suggestions. Is Juana, you have your hand up. Yeah, I appreciate Liz, uh, you know, uh, going through that and the fact that she's giving in, us an option also. Uh, so I would like to look at that letter. Uh, I appreciate that you brought it up and we can, uh, at the retreat also, we can look at it. So I will go for that. Thank you. Joy, do you have an opinion? Um, I, I agree. I'd like to get a little bit more information. Right. Well, then uh, I move to postpone this to the next meeting. Let's keep it on the agenda till everyone has looked at it. So I don't know if I have to move to do it, in which case somebody has to no? Okay. All right. Let's just move move the agenda item then. And the next item is update on the affordable housing trust. I think that's Liz, right? That is actually mine. I was not able to attend the affordable trust meeting and, or the CSSJC meeting that happened last week because of my sister's death. I was away. So I do not have an update on either one of those um, initiatives right now. And I apologize for that, but I was busy with um, planning a funeral for my sister. Sorry. And yeah. You have our condolences, Liz. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so we move to the next item then. Um, update on the HRC bylaw. And again, background for the uh, new members. We spent several months redrafting or drafting. I don't really know what, but there was something there when I showed up and we reworked it and it was sent to the uh, town manager to be processed for the appropriate approvals. So Pamela has her hand up. She can give us the update. Um, I can also uh, just uh, inform you that the CSJC is now at um, full capacity. So there, that was a concern about their lack of having the ability to have a quorum, but they um, they have all of their new members. And so they were able to, to hold a meeting um, last uh, week and um, they did have a quorum present. So um, they're welcoming new members as are you. Um, so they're, they're moving ahead. Uh, um, the, HRC bylaw. So for, for new members, um, at last year's uh, Human Rights Commission retreat, the members to um, discuss what would be the items that they wanted to work on during the, during the year. And the number one priority was to look at revising the bylaw that creates the commission. Um, there were several different clauses in the bylaw where they felt like the language was not, um, you know, just wasn't current and it didn't really reflect the wishes of the of the commission. And so throughout the last year, mem members worked on revising the bylaw and that work really came to a completion, I think in April, April or May, I cannot remember the exact month, um, but um, late spring or early summer, the, um, a, pursuant to the to the bylaws for the town, um, the the HRC recommendations go to the town manager, who then has to consider them and will make a decision about whether um, to endorse them or not. Uh, he has not made a decision. Um, he did. I pres I gave him the bylaws that were completed by the HRC. He then asked me to create a chart that um, 
um, displayed the old bylaw and the uh, suggested changes. So he has had that information, I would say, for a month now and um, is, still in, is still making a decision. And I'm not sure whether he has had a chance to forward a, an onto legal counsel. Um, so um, we haven't moved forward, but it is creeping along. So I'm a little concerned about this only because we're going to our retreat and it would be really nice to have our bylaws clear um, at the retreat. But, and, and because it's just taken so long and we have no idea like what the issues are. Like if, if we understand what the potential issues are, then we can work through and try to resolve them. But we haven't heard anything back. Do you have any suggestions? Do you think it'll affect our retreat? So I, I don't necessarily think it will re, um, reflect your retreat. I know when the, in the last iteration of the bylaw, there was continued discussion about maybe some further changes. Um, I will reach out. Um, you do have uh, like three weeks, are we three weeks away from the retreat? Um, so I will um, talk to the town manager to see if we can get some feedback, but I don't, I don't think it will um, drastically impact your retreat because at if you follow the format that we, that was used last year, it's an opportunity for the members to get to know each other and to have an understanding of the work of the commission. And with so many of you being new to the commission, I think spending the time on those issues um, will be well spent. And then the other big ask is to make a decision about what are your priorities for for the year and so that's sort of you know you that's getting that finalized is certainly a priority but you would also be using this time to identify other priorities that you want to pursue so for example um last year there was a little bit of discussion um about um i proposed to the commission that they consider a legacy project a large project that 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 would um, carry on the work of the commission, you know, um, annually. And there were a couple of different options for the legacy project. Um, one is for the town to uh, to adopt uh, a principle of being a I think it's compassionate city. That's actually uh, a program that Councillor um, Shalini um, Balmain was in interested in. And then the other uh, proposal was for the commission to adopt a program that's called, uh, I believe it's a um, a, a welcoming, um, welcoming, there's something else I'm missing a t uh, in the title, but basically either of those programs would have the commission take on a new project that would be something that they would promote annually in the town. Uh, the welcoming um, program I suggested would would align very well with the town's annual block party uh, because it generally is focused on welcoming new new members to the community, whether they're immigrants or other folks. And the program um, uh, generally has a number of different events that could happen throughout the year where people are informed of their rights or given, you know, information about support services for immigrant families. I can um, forward to you the information that was part of the packet from the last retreat, or, you know, you can do what, you know, decide to do something completely different. I think it's really an opportunity for you to get to know each other, understand how the commission works and what you want your priorities to be. And they may be something completely different. It could be a focus on use. It's up. It's up to you. But I will say that it. I think it was very helpful for this commission to have one big project that they were working on towards the year because they accomplished something um, rather than having you know conversation, conversation and discuss discussion of town. Um, you know, um, events is very important, but to be working towards a goal and to have that uh, achievement at the end of the year, I think, uh, was very helpful. And even though you're not quite there with the bylaws, um, certainly, I think, 
you know, you've moved that discussion along quite far. So the, the retreat is whatever you decide it to be. Are there questions? Liz, did you want to add? You were the, sorry. No, I think Pamela summed it up very well. And I think it's um, really important for us to be able to come together, get to know each other. Um, I don't like to use the word intimately, but I guess that's the best word for it. Um, and um, being able to um, take a look at who we are as individuals and as a unit that's going to try to help whoever it is that we need to help in whatever capacity. So Deb has her hand up. Thank you, uh, Liz. Along those lines, what would help me um, is to have some kind of a chart, I don't know, summary of the landscape of all of the town commissions and activities that we might interface with, because I was recently at a presentation from the reparations committee, for example, and there was an opportunity to ask questions. And so I, I said, I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission. I'm wondering how we can support you and be your accomplice and your ally. And um, they actually had an idea, which now has escaped me. So, um, <laughs> but I would love to know, um, like what our natural allies um, might want from us, I guess. And I don't know that right now. So um, I, can provide you with a list of the boards and committees in um, town. There are more than 40 of them. So <laughs> there are lots of possibilities for connections on lots of different issues. Um, it, you know, and Jennifer can speak to this more in depth, but in, um, in the one year experience that I have, the HRC, the CSSJC and um, the African Heritage Reparations have worked collaboratively and have supported each other um, and uh, on a number of different issues. So I think those were nat uh, natural uh, alignments, but there are many, you know, many other possibilities. Uh, I, you know, the Affordable Housing Trust and um, the Bis Disability Access and Advisory Committee. I mean, there, are, you know, the the results are. Um, the possibilities are endless. And I think one way um, to sort of uh, make a decision about which ones you'd like to promote would be to um, maybe take a look at recent agendas for those um, the boards that you're sort of slightly interested in what's going on. So. But I also think it's a good idea to just bring a list of those um, mm -hmm committees and boards to the meetings just for to have a look take a look at and you know if some of us has more experience on others and we if we could take a few minutes to talk about them that would be I think a good idea yeah I'm happy to bring the list to the retreat to the retreat that would be your next meeting so So I don't actually have any idea how this retreat would might happen I could keep going many many ways. Um, so it would help me to see, like, do you all prepare an agenda or some sort of rough plan that some that I know that the commission isn't going to meet again. So, um, so how do we engage in how that day is structured? So um, last year, I worked with the co-chairs to um, to create an agenda for the retreat. The retreat will be posted um, as an as a meeting, um, and uh, and so it could be you know the public could attend. Um, and I've been told that generally no one from the public does attend, but um, there is the possibility that a member of the public could come and you know sit and observe if they so choose. Um, I, again, can send you the uh, packet from last year. Um, I think uh, uh, what we ended up doing just, and people, please weigh in, uh, Liz and Jennifer, um, that we had an introductory sort of warm up where people did get a chance to, to, to learn about each other and their backgrounds. Um, we did um, a very sort of simple exercise that I am poem. So 
people got a chance to talk about who they are and what values they have. And then um, there was um, some discussion. We did not do a full day, which I think you are doing this year. I, I felt like there was not a, enough time at, at uh, last year. So after the sort of warm up, getting to know each other piece, there was um, some discussion about what might be the priorities for the commission for the year. There was um, time taken to review the bylaws then, and that's one reason why they sort of rose to the top because there were some new members. Um, they had an opportunity to re review all of the bylaws and felt that the language you know, could be um, needed to be revised. I think we also spent some time um, talking about uh, what the um, HR complaint process uh, was like. And at this time, so this was in October of last year, I had been on the job for all of like three months. So I was still learning very much with, with the commission as well. Um, and, you know, we broke for lunch and, um, you know, they made it uh, a list of priorities. As I said, the bylaws um, rose to the top and that was, as was the focus for the, um, for the year, the the commission also, I think, during that time, spent quite a bit of time talking about the July fifth police interaction with the students as well. That was also a major topic, and it you know it was of course very fresh, um, and so there was discussion about um, that incident, the report writing, the you know my role as the DEI director. So if I'm leave, leaving something out, Jennifer and Liz, please weigh in. That was pretty much it. Uh, unfortunately, Jennifer wasn't able to stay with us because she had some mm -hmm. personal issues she needed to tend to. So she was in and out. But that was pretty much it. And I thought it was a very productive time. Unfortunately, I'm the lone wolf from that whole crew. <laughs> so <laughs> um, whatever it is that, you know, we always have an other. So if there's something else that needs to be brought up or if you think about something, we can always put it in the other category and we can discuss it. So um, if you think of things beforehand, please reach out to Pamela or Jennifer or Ronnie or myself so that we could um, consider having those topics. But um, we have a lot of work to do, but then we don't have a lot of work to do. And most of the work that we do is gonna, is gonna come from other places and how we respond to those things and how we see those things and planning things that are beneficial for the entire community to um, engage so that everybody is feeling welcome, which is why I like the welcome uh, format of our town government. So um, I'll leave it at that. Deb has her hand up again and I'm gonna mute myself so Deb can speak. Come on. You're, you're muted. muted, Deborah. You're muted. Sorry, I'm not on my usual computer. I'm on my wife's laptop. Um, I, I, having just been interviewed about the police chief search, I'm just wondering if maybe when we meet, um, in just a couple of weeks, we might have an update on where things are and uh, what direction the town is planning to go and what role we might or might not continue to play. Yeah, so I to actually have. I have I have that as part of our you know how we get to the end and there's an other update. <laughs> That's part of my other update. Are there any other questions or shall we move on and leave it to Pamela to deal with the rest of this? So no questions and it looked like I skipped a line on the uh, agenda. Uh, by mistake, and that was the update to community events group. I don't know who makes that update. I think that's probably going to be Jennifer. Um, um, when um, can we just go back? To uh, when she... Yeah. No, I'm here, but you okay. were you had been moving with it, so I. It was on the agenda. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Um, 
I am, my brain is in like five places and I will explain a little bit, or you guys may, may know that are already. Um, so there has not been um, any movement on forming a formal community events group. What we had discussed was reaching out to community members to have a group, a broader group other than the, the this board and the CSSJC to work on identifying cultural events that would be supported throughout, supported by a larger group. Um, I, I, uh, so I have a not I have not moved forward on that. Um, I've just had my hands uh, really full, so I apologize. But I have not reached out to people um, um, to invite them to, to that group. And I did uh, share this concept with the CSJC when they met last week, um, and they I would say had some mixed feelings about it um, because uh, I think there was some sentiment that I should re rely more on internally on the members of that group. As, um, um, and, and that wasn't, I won't say it wasn't necessary, but maybe it didn't have the weight of needing to go beyond, go, go beyond the cor current boards. Questions, comments? All right, we'll move along then. Uh, Latinx Heritage Month. Yep, that's me. That's the Sunday from one to four. Um, we always could use help setting up, although it seems like it might be raining, so the event will be at Crocker Farm. And um, it, I'm hoping that it's a, a wonderful, we have a DJ, we'll have some food, and then we have some salsa dancing. So I'm very excited and we'll have some history on different Latinx um, communities and countries, as well as, you know, I'm really, for AAPI Heritage Month, we had a map and uh, they, people put the pins where they were from in the different countries. So we're gonna have something very similar to that for um, Latinx Heritage Month. So we're very excited. And I just wanted to go back to the retreat because I guess my question was, um, I don't know if Jacinta and Tyler are mobile, if we're having the, um, and I know that Tyler is not feeling well and Jacinta wasn't able to be sworn in. So she didn't, I don't, is she here today? Okay. Yeah, so um, I just think we should think about that for the location because, or they need to, somebody needs to reach out and offer rides because there's no transportation to the Munson Library. Liz, do you want to? Liz, did you I want actually, to? Speak? I just wanted to mention that we have a special guest in our audience named Philip Avila. Yes. Hey man, what's going on? And I know he can't speak because he's an attendee, not a panelist, but He's here. <laughs> he can speak at public comment, though. Yeah, and I was. Yes, he can. It's, it's coming up. It's coming we'll up. Make sure we go back to public comment before we leave. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and Deb, I just wanted to let you know that we were really connected with the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee because Philip Avila, who was the co chair of the HRC, was also a member of the CSSJC. So we had a lot of overlap there. So, you know, I just wanted to, to let you know that that was there and, and that's something new that we don't have that connection right now. Well, it's certainly something I think we should have and um, we can certainly attend if not be a member of the CSSJC. Um, because there there is so much that's overlapping with that group that um, I think definitely we can talk about having us though I wouldn't I have actually wanted to go to their meetings but personally have not mostly for scheduling reasons but I think we can all we can all any of us go to that uh, and it might be good I don't know if there's one before the retreat but it's another thing to talk about as Deb had raised I'm also interested in 
forming some close alliances where there is overlap of interests and trying to advance uh, issues together. Um, Ronnie, I just wanted to say that the meetings are all recorded too, so people can go back and watch the meetings. They're on yeah. the YouTube, Town of Amherst YouTube channel, and the meetings are updated weekly on Fridays. Uh, right. Um, so now we're at the other upcoming events, which, yeah. So Liz, do you want to discuss your other events? My other events? Oh, other other uh, updates? It says events. Oh, no. I I see you, events. Is there another update? I don't see updates. Okay. No, it's for Diwali. Yeah. And, oh, um, that's for Diwali, right. Right. And then I was going to also add, Jennifer, if you could talk about the liberatory visioning. So we have the honor of having Dr. Barbara Love which was a recommendation of the Community Safety Working Group, who will be um, showing folks how to facilitate a conversation with the community in regards to liberatory visioning, or as of, some might want to say, as in what would it be like to live in a just community? So sh that training happens on Monday and Tuesday of next week from 5 to 9.30. Um, and again, it will be facilitated by Dr. Love. So I would say even if you already have facilitation skills, Dr. Barbara Love is incredible. Um, and it's always a pleasure to be in her presence. So if members are able to attend that, I think that that would be um, great for multiple reasons, but mostly just because it, it will also give you, you know, you're gonna be reaching out into the communities and having conversations with community members which is something that I believe um, is, you know, really important for the Human Rights Commission. So that's what that is. Did I get it? <laughs> or did you want to add anything, Pamela? Uh, just that um, we, um, the train the trainer session is designed to be both for um, uh, town staff and community members. The, ho the hope is that we would get some t staff I'm also completing it. We are going to provide a dinner and we have offered to provide child care um, so that folks can attend. Um, okay, and we realize it's a big time commitment. So hopefully if, if you're able to, to devote the time, we think it would be worthwhile. And if you can attend, if you can please help spread the word in the meantime, um, because I'm sure there's a lot of community members who, while we advertise in so many places, still don't necessarily know that this is happening. And where will it be held? It's gonna be in the bank center, in the large activity room at the bank center. Um, I, I ha um, Jen, I don't know if, um, if you know what the current registration is, but we have plenty of space. So we could, we would l welcome more people. I think when I last checked in with you, there was 14 and we were hoping to get 30 folks, so. And where do we go to register? Is there a link or somewhere? Yep, yeah, if you go to the town website, it's right on the news and announcements. Um, and it's also on the calendar for Monday the 20, is that the 26th? And I will also send the link tomorrow morning. Monday's the 25th. Oh, sorry, 25th. Thank you. So the Diwali celebration, did you want to talk about that? So we are the we are planning the first town of Amherst sponsored Diwali or Human Rights Commission sponsored Diwali celebration, and is it the Festival of Lights? Correct. Yeah. And so this was something that Town Councilor Shalini Ball Mill was um, had orchestrated last year and the year before, and the turnouts were excellent, and it was excellent programming. Um, so we're really excited to kind of have this um, event for 
for Diwali in celebration. And I think we're still planning. We I don't think a date has been solidified yet, but it is in November. I think they're looking at November 18 or November 19, which technically is past Diwali, but it's still okay because it's celebrated over many days. And just one other thing about Diwali, because I grew up with it. Uh, Diwali is the celebration of life, but it's also the celebration of good winning over evil. So in many parts of the world where they celebrate it, there are all these different stories. So even within India, in the South where I grew up, there's a different kind of story from a non-Hindu community. I mean, it's supposed to be a Hindu celebration, but it's not really. It's a bit like Christmas. But the stories of how good overcame evil are always fantastic and uh, definite. Good definitely wins. Um, so it's, 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 it's a fun celebration. And I've been in other countries when they've celebrated it, not India, in other words. And the, everyone has their own take. But the thing that you do to, to celebrate is always have lights and food and fun. So I think it'll be good for us to host that. Or, or be affiliated with that. Um, Absolutely. So I have, I actually have an issue to bring up, but I guess that's in member reports. Is that where that happens? So you, you on your agenda, you have your second um, public comment listed. Right. Um, so oh, and then other topics. Okay, let's yeah. go to public comments then, since we have public. Welcome, Philip. Can I promote him to a panelist? Yay. Hey, everybody. Hey. What's going on? Oh my God. Yes, oh, I just wanted. Rally. Yes, I just wanted to jump on really quick and just say uh, good work and so glad to hear the new co-chairs. I wasn't able to attend last month and I'm excited for you both. Um, and yeah, just uh, keep up the good work. I've had so many people reach out to me about uh, Latinx Heritage Month coming up. And so I've been just sending them over to uh, when it's happening this weekend. And yeah, so just wanted to stop by check in how things are going that's it don't forget us keep coming will do i'm still in denial that you're actually there so i'm just saying <laughs> he was one of the best co-chairs i've ever worked with in my life <laughs> thank you appreciate that i'll second that So I also know that usually we have um, updates, but when we did the updates, you specifically asked me about um, the um, affordable housing. So, but I have other updates <laughs> other than affordable housing. So there. So let's do that then. Okay. So first, um, I have to follow up um, for the, those of you who are new, Philip and I actually worked with the affordable housing, members of the affordable housing trust and also the board of health. And we tackle, we're tackling the issue of affordable housing in Amherst. Um, we had a um, seminar, if that's a good word for it. And then we met and brought together all of our notes and we're looking for a time to, um, present our findings to the town council. The question we have is, do we present it to the slate of town councilors we have now or wait until the new slate begins in January? So that was just a hesitation that we have and we're gonna be going back and um, trying to figure all of that out. Second, um, I was able to go to the hearing loss webinar, which was I think Monday night, um, and got some really good information, but I also think that I got to find his name is Jonathan Odell, who did the presentation on how to work with people in the 
hearing loss and deaf community. And I don't even know what population we have that has some form of hearing loss in Amherst, but it would be good if we could, um, Pamela, and I got to reach out to you, reach out to him and see if he can come and do um, a little something, something with either the Human Rights Commission or a combination of some other members of our town. It was put on by the Bonstable County Human Rights Commission. So that's why they invited all the other human rights commissioners to be there. So um, it was very informative. I have a page full of notes that I could go over, but it would be really nice if we could reach out to him and see if he could come and talk to us specifically about the town of Amherst and get from maybe the Board of Health or somebody um, information on our um, deaf or and or hearing loss community in Amherst because they come in different waves. And the other update that I have is I did, and I'm hoping and praying that some of you also was able to um, connect with the um, folks that were getting information on the police chief mm -hmm. um, updates. I know that um, I was only able to do it yesterday. Again, last week I was gone. Um, so I met with the gentleman yesterday and it's, it's gonna be a long process. Um, and what he said to me is that they have to get all their information, tabulate their information, share it with um, the town counselor, set up a day. Um, then we have to um, post the position and have people apply. And then there's the whole interview process. And, how, you know, so it's going to be a minute before we get a new police chief. We do have an acting police chief as right now. So we just got to make sure we keep our fingers on that pulse and don't let them slip um, with any of the issues that we are considering and care about as we are going forward with, with um, that position. And I think the only other thing is we did get a complaint last year and we forwarded that complaint um, to the Mass Dis uh, Council Against Discrimination. From that, there was a Title IX investigation done on the um, issues that happened in the middle school, allegedly, I have to say allegedly, because I don't know that anything happened, but we'll leave it at that, the word allegedly. Um, and I'm assuming that there was some kind of report that was supposed to be done by the end of August. And if there is a report or a finding, it's not um, our position to know what's in the findings, I would just like to know that there was a finding. So if somebody wants to follow up on that, I'm not sure if Pamela, if you can, or if that's pretty much none of our business because we passed it on to somebody else. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Pamela, you have your hand up already. Yeah, so um, on, uh, I think I have information on all three points. So I think the Disability Access Advisory Committee would um, welcome the opportunity to, um, to you know, to meet with you and pair with you to bring in an individual uh, on the hearing loss. Um, currently, on the on the committee, there are a committee of seven. Um, uh, there are individuals with. Uh, physical mobility issues or individuals with um, a vision or, or no vision um, um, and then some other different types of uh, of dis you know of disability and I I don't know if there's anybody on the on the commission itself with hearing loss but I'm sure that they would be happy to um, to co-sponsor or be a part of that. They've been very active with the with the Massachusetts Office on Disability, and he has spoken um, several times um, to, to that group. So I'm happy to sort of make the connection there. Myra Ross is their um, is their chair. Yep. Thank you. And um... oh, Liz has a question. I think. No, I was just saying okay. thank you for that. Okay. All right. On the um um. For way of background on the police chief, the town has um, entered into a contract with uh, consultants, and they are, I believe, government HR is the name of the consulting group. 
Um, there will be, um, and I think you probably, um, Ronnie or and Liz, maybe as co-chairs, you might have received an email from the town manager stating that when they're at the stage for the composition of the committee that will um, engage with all of the candidates, um, there will be a member from this commission invited to be a part of that group. Um, in addition, I know that he has um, uh, ex ex uh, expanded the number and of opportunities for members of the community to engage in conversation with the consultants and um, about the police search. So as Liz says, it's gonna be a lengthy process. Uh, but I, I think if you did not receive an, an email from him sort of detailing all of the different stages, let me know, um, Ronnie and Liz, and I'll make sure that that email right. gets to you. I did not understand the stages. And in fact, when I, in the interview, I expected the person to give me a short overview of like, what was she doing and what was the process? I interviewed with the woman mm -hmm. um, and it took her a long time to explain that. And I had to prod and she, in part because she didn't know, I think, because it's, she kept saying they don't have a full contract. I forget the exact word. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like they do something and then the town does something and then maybe they do the next thing and then maybe they do the thing after or something. I, I really, honestly, I had did not get a good, like when you do the, an interview, you tell people like what you're going to do with their information. So I didn't get, I have to say, I didn't get a good sense of how they were going to analyze this data. I mean, it's one thing to talk to all these people, but um, I don't want to go into the details of our discussion, but I, did, I was left with a lot of concern about it and the feeling that it was very open-ended and I didn't really know where things were going or when the next thing would happen. Um, one thing they did say was that they were going to have a report on the findings from what they had. And so I was trying to find out, well, how then you interview all these people, then what do you do with the interview data and how do you sort through it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, I may not have asked my question very carefully because I think I said, what's the methodology or something? I may not have been very articulate in how I asked it, but I didn't get an answer about how all this was going to be sorted. Right. And there's a lot of input they're getting because they're talking to a lot of people. And she did say she was taking notes, but then I don't know what happens to the notes. Are the notes sorted in any right. fashion? So, so uh, I don't know. I got left with a, I, I also wanted to bring it up because I wasn't really sure what's going on. Right. So I think at this um, stage, they are gathering information that will be used to formulate the position description um, and the posting for the job that that's what these preliminary conversations are. You know, what do you want in a police chief? What are, should the, you know, the duties be the, uh, you know, I'm being very general. Uh, but she said they're not doing that. I actually asked that. What, in the, they're no, not, they're, that they're not? What they are doing is a report in which they're going to provide the findings from what they heard. Mm -hmm. And that the town of Amherst was going to do the description. I called it the job description, and she said the job, and they would come with the job announcement, which she said is different. I didn't really want to get into that because I don't really care. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, I can try to you know. see if I can get some information that would clarify the um, process, mm -hmm. um, but... You know, I, I, I could know. say I'm not yeah. the only one who commented on the process not being clear. Like mm -hmm. this happens, then this information goes here, this happens, and then this happens, and then that happens. So, and at the end, we have a police chief. That was not clear. Okay. And then on the last point, um, so there have been um, initially we received. Uh, we, meaning the HRC, received one complaint related to uh, the incidents at the school. Um, following that, 
um, because we were not, we didn't really have the capacity to adjudicate or, or that issue. The advice was to, to refer the complainant to the Mass Commission Against Discrimination where a complaint was filed. I know that since that initial complaint, there have been at least, I want to say at least three other related complaints filed at MCAD. I, I know this because um, some of them name the town of Amherst and they've come into the, um, you know, into the town manager's office. Um, um, and it is my understanding that, or it is likely that they are going to be consolidated into, you know, one major case, but they're making their way through. Um, the most recent filing that I saw uh, had a projection of an investigatory hearing in 2024. So I don't, I don't believe that they've reached a conclusion. I can try to inquire because we were named, but um, MCAD and most state agencies move a little, you know, fairly slowly, especially when there are multiple complainants um, around similar set of facts. So I can I can inquire, but I I don't think that they've reached a decision. I'd be shocked to hear that they have reached a decision. Well, thank you for your follow up and all my um, inquiries and also um, my uh, reports and other subcommittees that I've been being a part of. I'm happy. Um, so you're almost through your agenda. And this is um, before you talk about the next meeting date, this is not specifically an agenda item for the HRC, but I do want to share some um, information about the um, the um, the DEI office in Cress. Um, as you, you, as you may have heard or may not have heard, uh, I have been asked to be a part of a leadership team that is, um, you know, trying to shore up and support Crest during this interim period. Um, the team consists of four individuals, myself, uh, Chief Tim Nelson from the fire department, Sergeant Janet Griffin from the police department and Kat Newman, who had been serving as the, uh, the title is program assistant um, in the department. And um, it is interim. I've said many times interim to interim, interim, like I am, this is not going to be a permanent assignment for me. I'm just trying to help the, the department, um, you know, just uh, really be on steady ground and to support the responders. And um, we met, the leadership team met with the responders yesterday, um, trying to get some of their needs uh, met as well as to provide explanations about um, about things. So I, uh, I am, wanted to inform you of that one, because I know that you would have an interest and two, because uh, I have been you know, as I said to someone today, like I'm wearing uh, two hats, but I only have one head. So it's, it's a little bit difficult. And Jennifer has had to really pick up the slack because I've dropped a lot of balls and, um, and trying to, to navigate um, doing the work. It It is convenient that our offices are right next door. And we've actually now been able to share some space so that some of the responders have a little bit more private space of their own by coming into the little suite where we are, but um, that work is ongoing. And Ronnie, did you have, you said you had something to add as a yeah. part of your order? Yeah. Um, I think just going back, to, this is an announcement that you're making, right, to us to inform us about your role in Crest. Thanks. 
Yeah, so I wanted to bring up an issue that we don't have to decide today, but I wanted to raise it in the commission and then we can think about it during the retreat or in future meetings. And this is that I've learned that um, people who are immigrants in residing in Amherst with a green card, which essentially means that you're practically a citizen. I lived in the US with a green card for 11 years before I became an American citizen. Um, you pay taxes, you do everything else just like an American citizen, except you don't vote. And you don't vote in national elections, but in many places you can vote locally. In Amherst, you cannot vote in local elections if you're an immigrant uh, with a green card. Uh, and that's not because the town of Amherst opposes it. Apparently the town supports it, but it has not been brought to the state level for voting. So basically, it needs to be approved. I guess Mindy Dome and Joe Comerford and whoever else is working at the state level needs to need to bring it to a vote. And since we've just had the whole discussion about um, driver's licenses, um, which they had to push really hard for, uh, this would be a new issue. But it's something that um, I feel is quite important because if you, I mean, your right to vote is quite an important part of living somewhere. Um, so I, anyway, I wanted to bring this up. I was sort of shocked to hear that people who are immigrants, which means they're legally fully here, uh, cannot vote in the town of Amherst. So I wanted to just introduce it. It's that sort of the end of the day and um, I don't know what should be, you know, figure out if there's some way we can be more involved in addressing this issue. Um, in where I lived before, you could vote in local elections if you were over 16. And as long as you lived there, you just had to be a resident. You didn't even have to be, um, you had to be a documented resident, but you didn't have to uh, even be legal. You could vote for the local only. Um, so it's sort of shocking to me that an, Im that an immigrant with a green card cannot vote. So I'll stop there. I'm not really sure what, if any role we have, but I thought I should bring it up. So I saw uh, Jen's hand and Liz's hand. I think Jen was first. Um you can go ahead and let Liz go first, though. Okay, Liz. Okay, I was actually waiting for you to go first. But um, as we have thought about Amherst being a welcoming town um, as part of um, something we discussed at last year's retreat, I think this would be something great to bring up at the retreat, bring it then forward to the next meeting so that it is in, it's open to the public if they would like to weigh in and maybe um, create a document to pass forward in writing to Mindy and or Joe or, and or any of our other representatives to bring forward to the House. Because if this is a state thing, we have to go through them. If this is an Amherst thing, that's something that we could probably talk to the town council about. However, I think we should also talk to the town council. Um, but I think that this was something we can work on at the retreat, but also make sure we bring it up in our meeting next month or the month after so that other members or other people from the community can weigh in as well. Um, thanks, Liz. I was just going to hand. Yeah, I know. Well, I just was going to add that. So first, it does need to get approved by council first, and then it you can, and then it can be moved to the state. And um, yeah, that's my, really all I wanted to add. My understanding is that it was already approved by town meeting. Right, but town, but and then it wasn't approved. So I, I don't know. I would oh, either bring those approved? documents. No, it was approved by town in town meeting by the select yeah. board. The Amherst has approved that on three occasions, I think. And then they have gotten turned down at the state level. So right. what I was saying is redrafting something mm -hmm. because they still can't vote. Like you can 
take what was already previously done and revise it to some degree, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, to bring something new to the town council. And I would, I agree with Liz that it's something you guys can discuss at the retreat mm -hmm. and kind of have like, maybe, I don't want to call it a subcommittee because we know how that goes, but um, a couple of folks who, from the commission to, to work on a, a draft letter. And so I can, pull up the documents from the vote that approved it from town meeting. Right, thank you. I see Asa's hand up. Unmute yourself. <laughs> yes, Thanks. sorry. Um, I was asking that um, is, since I don't have the impression that um, the town council was what, um, or, um, what Amherst calls a town council is what I'm used to being called a select board in other towns. So is there like a separate select board or is this all synonymous? We had a select board that has now moved to town council at when somebody, I think, wanted us to be a city and become a mayor, mayor mayoral ship. Is that the good word? <laughs> and um, the town voted on having a town council. So we used to be a select board, but now we're a town council. The select board had like 40 members. The town council is 13, I want to say. No, we did not have, so <laughs> 40 select okay, board members. Mind. That would be hard. <laughs> that would be so hard. No, so we had a select board and there were five members on the select board. What? I thought there was a whole bunch of people on the select board. Okay, and there was 245 town meeting members who oh there it is town meeting. yes and so um our charter changed and we took a vote well we took a vote to change the charter in 2018 there was actually a full commission on it was called the charter commission who re redesigned what local government would look like in amherst and so in 2019 we voted in our first town councilors so, so it's kind of pretty new just changed the name and some maybe some of the responsibilities. Um, so it went from uh, five select board members. So before it would have been so that town meeting chose the the town voted on the select board members and the select board members oversaw the town manager and the town manager oversaw the employees. Now it's the town members. Um, approve the town councilors and the town councilors oversee the town manager. So this is new and we are now called the city known as the town of Amherst is like our legal name. Um, and so it was actually a really interesting process to, to go through. Does right. that make so, sense? I'm I would sorry, urge so... you to look at the charter. There's a, yeah. there's a yeah. document called the charter and when I moved here that one of the early documents that I looked at, it tells you everything about how the town is structured and where decision-making lies. It's a, it's a wonderful yes, document. I'll, you can skim it pretty quickly. Yes, I'll go yeah. do that. I just, you know, uh, gotta love New England town governments. Very, very simple setup. Any other comments on that? Okay, let's move it to, oops. Can I just make another announcement? Because here I am, I can remember stuff. So Ronnie and I um, attended the town council meeting on, and I'm blanking on the date, and we then um, presented them the state of the human rights um, of Amherst for them to vote on um, the work that we've done in the past year. So we did that presentation. I was in person, Ronnie was in Zoom. And uh, we shared the responsibilities to talk about our past year with the town council. That is right. And I was actually impressed that they read the report. They seemed receptive to us. And I got some notes afterwards saying thank you. And also, uh, I understand, and I'm not sure everybody ha knows this, that we have a role to advise the town council as well as part of our mandate. And they're, you know, of course, we don't have anything to say yet. So, of course, everybody's saying, please advise us, we're open. But it is it is a window of opportunity for us um, if we have issues we want to raise or policies we want to comment on, uh, we can do that. Yep. 
Hi, if this is the moment for announcements, I just want to say I try to take really good notes. I have the entire day of October 9th blocked off, but I don't know the actual time of our meeting, of our retreat, and I also don't know the location. So I'm very sorry if I missed that, but I'm wondering if someone could fill us in. Is it the 9th? It's the 8th. Yeah, it's the it's the Sunday. Whatever that Sunday is. Sunday, Sunday. October 8th. I'm getting, okay, yes. Sorry, Ooh. my apologies. It's the 8th. That's okay. Anyway, it's blocked off, but I don't know the time and I don't know the place. Right. So, um, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we stated that we would um, get devote a full day. So, I think starting at 9. Um, and um, the location was um, a bit of a debate. So last year we met at the Munson Library that um, Jennifer raised tonight the that that might be difficult for um, Jacinta and for Tyler. And so the other suggestion would be to use the town hall room in town, which of course that would be walking distance for, um, for them. So, um, do you have a preference regarding location? I prefer the town hall. But I also think that if we decide to go somewhere else, I'm happy to drive to Cynthia and Tyler since I live right near Amherst College and one block away from them. I wouldn't mind picking them up and dropping them off. I would say I'm happy anywhere, but I just, I'm sorry to be a stickler all day. Does that mean nine to four? Does that mean nine to five? Does that mean nine to six? I really, I want to, I want to obligate my time appropriately. So I, I, by all day, I think we mean nine to four, not nine to nine to six. So, so a full day. Yeah. And, um, and we uh, provided, uh, uh, you know, continental breakfast, we'll have coffee and some tea and stuff there. And we did, um, I think we had a working lunch um, because we really didn't have a, a a lot of time last year. We ended at two thirty, so I mean, we if we were if we have a full day, we could actually have a break for lunch or do an activity or something that would give people a, um, a little mental break rather than last year we we work through through lunch. Any other questions, announcements? Okay. So, our, so I'm just confirming. So we, um, so you're, well, Jennifer and I will confirm the town hall then for a location. Okay. That's good. And I'm hoping that we'll see most of you, if not all of you tomorrow night at our block party. Are all the blocks signed up for the block party? I saw there were some blanks on the last round. I had email Jennifer that I'm there. I'm going to be there the whole night. So whatever blanks there is, I'll be in. I'll just I'll be there the whole time. Where do we do? Where do we go? Like, is there somewhere specific we should show up at? Center of town. <laughs> so I, <laughs> just walk down the street and find our table. Right, right. So the. Okay. Um, <laughs> I believe that most of the town of Amherst uh, department tables are going to be near the fire uh, department. Um, and this year we have a actual table clause that says um, Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. So you'll be able to see that and know where we are. Um, we also, um, I'm almost tempted not to tell you, but I'm so happy that, that I saw. So the library uh, created pens so you will have a button that says um, Human Rights Commission that you yes. can wear. Uh, and um, and then um, Asa today uh, created a little flyer that talks about all four of the, the, of the boards that we, uh, um, so we're gonna look really fancy <laughs> this year. Like we are, you know, just, um, we tried really hard to to step up our, our our games. We have our tablecloth and we have the buttons. And in addition to the buttons that you can wear that will identify your board, um, the library also was generous enough to, I just gave them um, some terms. So there are buttons that say diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, 
and um, reparations. So that just the word so that we have a little takeaway for, for folks. I'm sorry, is there a button that says human rights? So the Commission. Human Rights Commission button says um, human has the commission on it, but the other ones just have the right. has the okay. just a title for the yeah. So yeah, that's wonderful. I had that on my mind that we should have something that says Human Rights Commission, so people know who we are, mm -hmm. and um, we can tell about what we do. Right, which we'll hopefully know by tomorrow in some. <laughs> their way but yeah. okay that's a joke um is there anything else i think we're at the end of the agenda just uh, again i'm happy to see our new commissioners and asa being working with jennifer and pamela and their office and pushing us along it's always nice to see younger folks because you guys know all kinds of like stuff with computers and how to fix this and move that and create this. I'm computer illiterate. I know how to do send an email and I don't know how to read and I know how to read one. That's about as much as I'm going to do for you. Okay. Um, enjoy not to say the reason was Rizwana, Rizwana, but I've met Joy on other occasions. She was very instrumental when we had a um, tragedy at the high school and she came in and helped us out and was an extra body in to help with the students that were affected. And so to see her here in our commission, I'm excited. And I just saw your daughter at the soccer game too. Just, I'm not trying to out her or anything, but that's where she was in case she was one. Well, thank you. You confirmed that that's where she was when she told me that's where she was going. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> Liz, I just want to, um, before we close, I just want to add my condolences on the loss of your sister. I'm so well, sorry. Thank you. So here's what I'm going to say about that. And I guess this could be off the record so you can turn off the recording if we're, but she lived a full life. She was 22 years older than me. She's mm. six and seven months and nine days old. Um, I'm sad. Um, um, she suffered for the last few years. She had dementia and um I'm sad, but I, and I hate to use the word relieved, but I'm at peace. I'll leave it at that. I'm at peace. Okay. I was trying to pause you because we need to adjourn before I can turn the recording. Oh, on. <laughs> so. so that's on the record, by the way, folks. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to adjourn the meeting so that then we can certainly stay on and have conversation as we would if we Oops. were in person. Um, so, oh, well, I don't know that up. you, yeah. mm, I don't think we can't do that really. We shouldn't, when there's a quorum of you guys can't meet off. Oh, that's line. right. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts before we close? I'm happy to say it's 7.50. We're 10 minutes earlier than scheduled. We are so efficient. Um, <laughs> everyone have a good evening. It is 7.50 PM, 7.51 and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Good night.